Welcome to the Seth Thibodeau Show with Nichols head baseball coach Seth Thibodeau. Presented by State Farm Insurance. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state with State Farm Insurance. Welcome to the Seth Thibodeau Show presented by State Farm Insurance. I'm your host, Mike Wagenheim. Coming up in today's program, we'll introduce you to a group of Colonel fans that feeds the team's success. We've also got an update on softball, volleyball, and soccer on the Colonel Connection. Right now, we're joined by the head coach of the Colonel baseball team, Seth Thibodeau. Very productive week for Nichols baseball. Good week for us. Winning four out of five was, was really nice, and, and we're, we're starting to get to uh, a situation where we're playing really good baseball at a really good time. The Colonels heading into the uh, series with Texas A&M Corpus Christi last weekend, and a couple disappointing weekends preceded that. You had a chance to clinch against Sam Houston, had a chance to clinch against McNeese, didn't get it done. This was really a, a must-win for you guys, at least mentally, uh, clinching against Corpus Christi. You're able to get the job done. It was. It absolutely was, and we felt, our guys felt really good about things after that game on Saturday, and, and going into Sunday with a chance to sweep was was a position that we wanted to be in, and we'd like to be in there more often as well. Do you guys still have a bullpen? Because we didn't see much we of it the last <laughs> We haven't been able to use it much here in the last five games or so, but we do have one. <laughs> well, hopefully we won't see too much of it, even though they can get the job done. The Colonel's starting a pitching rotation has been phenomenal over the course of the last couple of weeks here. Let's take a look. Colonel's playing host at Texas A&M Corpus Christi this past week in a Southland Conference Series. The Islanders coming off a school record 37 win campaign and pitching would be the story of this series beginning Friday night with Seth Webster's performance. He played with a painful blister on his throwing hand. You can actually see him uh, checking it there right before the game. The leadoff man, Jeremy Merrick, finds uh, that Webster, even at less than 100%, still very dangerous. He stayed off the white of the plate all night, retiring 11 of the first 12. Corpus Christi's Kyle Danford flailing at this pitch. He went down swinging three times on the night. We're scoreless in the bottom of the third. Jeremy Hill back in the starting lineup after an injury, facing Matt Danton in his first weekend starting. Hill takes Danton in the alley in right center. Michael LaGrange racing around from first base. Nichols up by a score of one to nothing. Webster got some defensive support in this ball game as well. We take it to the fourth inning here. Stanford Brantley, again here, fouling one off, but David Zorn stays after it, makes the sliding catch in the bullpen. Outstanding job. Very nice job by Zorn filling in for Hill out there while Jeremy was on the shelf. Colonels back to bat in the bottom half of the frame. Danton issues a pair of one-out walks, and Mike Barbett makes him pay. Clubbing one over the head of Eric Weiss. It scores Cody Dufran. Nichols added a Phillip Lyon sack fly and a ground out RBI from Hill to make it 3 0, and that would chase Danton from the ball game. Now, Webster really only made one mistake of the night. Here in the fifth, he hangs one to Jonathan Gonzalez. That's the wrong guy to hang one to. The only home run threat for the Islanders hits one just inside the foul pole, his fourth on the year. At that point, it's a 4 to 1 ball game. Gonzalez, the big bopper for the Islanders. Wasn't the only time he rounded the bases this weekend. Nichols would answer in the sixth, two on with one gone, and Lyons grounds to second. Merrick with a diving stop, but he can't hang on to the baseball. Zorn scores from second on the infield hit. Lyons with three RBIs in the ball game. After reliever Jake Jubczynski balks home a run, Bo Falk tags one into the left field corner. Hill comes home. Falk's eighth double of the year. Colonels have broken away. They're up seven to one after Falk's two bagger. Webster, meanwhile, Got better as this game went along. Top of the seventh, he finds the inside corner on Brantley for strike number three. The next batter is Gonzalez, and there would be no repeat from the fifth. Gonzalez is gone looking. And then Brad Porras coming up to bat. He's got no chance whatsoever, uh, whatsoever here. Webster fans decide in order. He sent the final 11 batters of the night packing. Pinch hitter Omar Garcia made to look silly here in the ninth. Webster with his third consecutive complete game victory. A five hitter, no walks, nine strikeouts. Webster has only walked two batters all season long. Seven to one is your final score. The Colonels take the Friday night opener. Nichols now four and one in series openers this season. Webster was just brilliant. He was magnificent. He carved him up really well and he had every pitch working. And he was getting a little bit off of the corners. And when you, when Seth Webster gets that, the other team is going to be in trouble. And, and uh, he was lights out. And, and we, he, you know, he got us going. He got our guys motivated. We swung the bats well behind him and played some good defense. 
played a f complete baseball game there. That's what you've night. been looking for. That's just a complete all three phases. Be able to dominate the baseball game and be in control the entire time, and we did it. We ran the bases well. We swung the bats. We played defense and pitched it. You know, and we were lights out that night. And that's exciting. Let's be consistent with that now. Two weeks in a row, Seth Webster named the Louisiana Sports Writers Association Pitcher of the Week. So the Colonels take Friday's opener. They had let the last two series slip away, though, as we talked about earlier. Nichols giving the ball to Patrick Shreve here. He gets the assignment for the Colonels coming off a solid outing against McNeese State. Let's take a look at those highlights. Here's Shreve on the bump coming off his most solid outing of the season. The Islanders would counter with Adam Helsher. They actually moved him back in the rotation. He was their Friday starter and got bumped back a day to Saturday. Helsher in control early. He fans Bo Falk. In fact, he struck out the side in the first. Helsher been the most uh, consistent pitcher for the Islanders this year. Shreve holds serve in the first two frames before the Colonels Blake Bazeron tees off on Helsher. This was a prodigious blast that lands across the street. Two-run shot. Bazeron's third home run of the year. He finished the day with three runs batted in. The defense would back up Shreve just as they did with Webster the game before. Top of the third, Jeremy Merrick grounds into the 4-6-3 double play, negating a leadoff walk. Corpus Christi with two on in the fourth. And Shreve fans Omar Garcia here, and he would do the same thing to Dan Centrelli. Got him looking. The Islanders stranded seven through the first five innings. Bottom of the fourth, big two-out hit for Austin Flores going the opposite way. Falk scores from third. Flores legs out the double, sliding into second base. It's three to nothing, Nichols. Flores has raised his batting average 50 points over the last seven games. Next batter, Cody Dufran. The bouncer inside the bag skips by Centrelli. Flores comes around. Dufran with a nice day at the plate. Four to nothing, Colonels, after four innings. We would work our way to the top of the fifth. Sometimes the ball just bounces your way. Merrick's grounder off the glove of Flores, but it rolls right to Lyons. Starting up the twin killing again, erasing a leadoff walk. Merrick did ground in a run in the seventh to make it 4-1. Helsher would make it through the seventh. Colonels batting in the eighth against former Friday starter Tim Keller. Dufran drives in Falk. It's Dufran's third knock. That's his first multi-hit game of the season. Bajeron added a sack fly later, 6-1 Nichols. Corpus Christi would put two on in the ninth, but Shreve able to seal the deal. He gets Eric Weiss to pop up. Shreve with his first complete game of the year, third of his career, eight hits, three walks, six strikeouts. Nichols wins it by a final score of 6-1. to one. So you got a bona fide ace in Seth Webster, now able to back him up. Patrick Shreve has gotten better as the season has gone along. you got to be feeling good. Feeling really good about those two guys. They're getting that groove they were in last year when we met our stretch run. Have those guys do that, and then have Blake Bajeron be on the tear that he's on, and Cody Dufran step up when Evan Weibel's out like he has. It's been awesome. But also, Austin Flores really getting it done, too, at the plate. And, of course, he's done it on defense. But all these juniors and seniors step Stepping up, it, it makes you happy and proud, and, and those guys are really taking ownership of their club. The Colonels with a chance going for their first weekend sweep of the year. Mike Wisecarver on the bump for Nichols. He's still in search of his first victory of the season. His previous outing against McNeese was really the first time he struggled this year. He'd get a little help from his friends. Top of the second, Merrick leading off, and again, it's David Zorn laying out and coming up with a play. The defense also turned two double plays in the first three innings. Corpus Christi starter Daniel Miner, the Southland strikeout leader. This is a Friday caliber guy, really, pitching on Sundays. Colonels batting in the third. Mike Barbett just can't check his swing. Miner fans his side in order in the frame. One out in the top of the fourth. It's Jonathan Gonzalez again. Bolts one over the left field wall. Second home run of the series for Gonzalez. His fifth on the year. The Islanders are up one to nothing. Gonzalez had two of just three extra base hits for Corpus Christi in the entire series. Top of the fifth inning after Gonzalez's long ball. Two runners in scoring position here for Dan Centrelli. He lofts it to right. Sacrifice fly for Centrelli. This would score Brad Porras and Nichols trailing by a score of two to nothing. Now, an Austin Flores error allowed a run to score in the inning, and this allowed it to continue before Eric White strokes the RBI single, plating Drew Vest, 4 0 Islanders midway through the fifth. A minor allowed just one Colonel to reach cleanly through five innings. Blake Bajeron at the bat here cuts through the pitch in the dirt. Minor fans six 
In the first five turns at bat for the Colonels, Corpus Christi scores two in the sixth to chase Weisbarber. Nichols finally gets one across in the sixth. Philip Lyons with a ground out RBI scoring Zorn. That made it a six to one ball game. Brad DeLott did an outstanding job out of the bullpen. Four no hit innings. He gets Weiss here swinging to end the top of the ninth. Minor though, he retired the final 10 batters he faced. He would get Bo Falk here to end the ball game. Minor with a three hitter, no walks. He fans 10. Corpus Christi salvages a weekend with a six to one victory on Sunday. The entire weekend was about pitching total. It was, it absolutely was. And it was really, you know, I know the results weren't what we wanted on, on Sunday, but to see Brad DeLott throw as good as he did, I, I was very happy to see that. And, you know, we only used four arms in three games. So uh, I thought Wise Carver gave us three to four solid innings. And, and we, you know, there's a few things we can do with him to, to help him out a little bit, and we will. But my concern is we're not winning on, we're not being, we're not successful on day three. And you have to be successful on day three in the conference tournament in the regional or you're going you're gonna to put yourself in a bind. So that's our next challenge for the season is to make sure we can overcome our miscues on Sunday and try to be a dominant club on day three. Well, the Colonels uh, may not be doing so well on Sunday. You're doing just fine on Tuesdays, aren't you? We're doing okay on Tuesdays, and we, we, could, we kept our role going. It was good to see another good performance. The Colonels handing the ball to Mike Sook this past Tuesday as a team hosted Jackson State, the first place team in the SWAC. The plan was to get the bullpen some work after Webster and Shree went the distance on Friday and Saturday. Not the way this night went, though. Home half of the first inning, Philip Lyons trying to sacrifice. He legs out the infield hit on the clinical drag bunt. The Colonels have runners at the corners with nobody out. Soft tossing lefty Chris Wingard walks Jeremy Hill to load the bases before plunking Bo Falk. That forced in a run. Nichols made certain that Wingard's night was short. Michael LaGrange at the dish. The sack fly to left plagues Lions as LaGrange notches his 17th RBI on the year. Two to nothing in favor of Nichols. And then Blake Bajron goes to town, launching one to left. The two-run shot doubles the lead. It's 4-0. Wingard faced just one more batter before exiting. Bajeron wasn't done, though. More on him later. Sook going to work now, slicing and dicing the Tiger offense. He allowed two hits through three innings. Sook, though, gets Frank Solis on the fastball down the chute here in the fourth. Two batters later, Charles Epperson at the plate. He is victimized as well. No chance on the big heater. Only one of the final 23 batters that Sook faced uh, face rather would reach base cleanly against him. Reliever Jeremy Gray did an outstanding job for the Tigers except for this. Bottom sixth, Bajeron again. Didn't even look like he was ready for the pitch. It doesn't matter. His fifth long ball of the year, third in the last three games. This one a solo shot, five to nothing Colonels. Unfortunately, the injury bug biting Nichols in the seventh. Freshman catcher Chase Garrett gets his first start. He's trying to go from corner to corner here on this David Zorn bunt and he winds up jamming his finger, diving into third base. Garrett would have to leave. It's a dislocated finger on his non-throwing hand, but for a catcher, even your non-throwing hand is still trouble. He'll, he'll be out probably a few weeks, so Nichols now down to one catcher, Evan Weibel on the shelf right now as well. Sook here, finishing off this gem. He got stronger, or so it seemed, as the game went along. Sylvester Peck goes down swinging in the eighth. Sook fanned the side in order. Jose Cruz whiffing here as well. It's a two-hit Complete game shutout for Sook. He walked just one and struck out 10. Kendall Logan going down looking in the end. Six to nothing is your final. Nichols now 8-0 and in midweek games this season. Michael Sook just, just blazing that fastball, and, and Jackson State really didn't, didn't have a chance to they, catch up. They didn't have a chance. Everything, it was always strike one and strike two, and every time you looked at the board, it was it was one-two count when Sook was on the mound. Uh, but he had his breaking ball last night, and it was really good, and he had a changeup. And when Michael Sook can, can have three pitches to go along with a 92-mile-an-hour fastball, he's going to be deadly. And uh, Jackson State is a very good baseball team. And, and he made him look bad on the mound. And it was, it was his performance and his outing that really got us through. So three complete games from your staff in the last four. Seth Webster, again, state pitcher of the week. Uh, you you got to be feeling positive right now. I'm very positive about it. It was good to have a, a fourth guy step up like that. And, and uh, again, we want to get it done on that, the day three. It's still looming over our team. But I feel really good about our club. It was good to see Bergeron. You know, have three or four home runs in the last week or so, and, and uh, also to have some really good pitching performances. I, I'm excited about it, and we got a challenge this weekend that I'm really ready for. Well, 
Well, I've got some eligibility left, so if Cody Dufran gets hurt, I'm your guy, all right? <laughs> we'll take it. Hopefully nothing happens. Yeah, I know you're so shorthanded right now behind the plate. Right, right. You know, we'll give a Chase a chance to, to get a, you know, get some action in, and he played really well, and to, it's unfortunate that he jammed his finger up. And we're going to find out today how he's, you know, progressing with a, a doctor's appointment today, but I'm totally confident in Cody Dufran. we just got to make sure he stays healthy. Knock on wood. That's right. You can find it around right. here. Up next on the Seth Thibodeau Show, presented by State Farm Insurance, our Philip Boudreaux shows us a collection of fans that keeps things cooking even after the games are over. We're back in 60 seconds. There goes Dwayne's car. There goes Dwayne's house. And there goes Dwayne. Man, that thing does not like the way. State Farm's got you covered. In Lockport, call Ashley Barrios. And in Homa, call Travis Gravois. Get to a better state. Nichols fans and parents have come together on a mission to elevate Colonel Baseball. Through an organization called the Coaches Committee, they're able to provide an extra hand beyond the university's means. Nearly 15 years ago, Mitch Thompson's oldest son played for the Colonels. Thompson and some of the other fathers wanted to cook for the players because they had nowhere to eat after a game. With limited funds, Thompson and party started feeding hot dogs to the team following a contest. Within a few seasons, Thompson saw their jester evolve into what would eventually become the coaches committee, of which Thompson would become president. Some of these fathers who come in and see what we're doing, and then they want to help, and they help us do what we need to do. They help us raise money, they bring us donations, they help cook, and every year we get new parents because we're going to lose some every year. And I have a core of about five people who's been with me now for about five or six, seven years that always comes back. There's local guys here that's got nobody playing, that enjoy coming out here and cooking, and we cut up and uh, we become real, real good friends. Mike Fakier and Bob Passman are a part of the nucleus that ensures that the assembly stays on a strong foundation. Fakier's ties with Thompson enticed him to join the club, while Passman's previous role with Nichols sparked his involvement in the committee. I had a friend of mine named Mitch Thompson, uh, whose sons had played ball here. Uh, and I actually coached his boys in Little League, asked me to, to give him a hand raising some money to try to help um, basically feed the kids after every ball game and helping Mitch raise a little money, started coming out here watching the baseball games and really just kind of kind of fell in love with things that were going on here with the, with the baseball program. So I, I just continued helping with the, uh, with the coaches committee. With baseball, I used to do the radio uh, and uh, after the games, they were cooking down here for the team, and I came down and would, would eat with the team. And then I just did that for one year and uh, enjoyed being down here with the players so much and the fans that come hang around down here in the cooking committee that uh, I just, the next year, I just started showing up and helping to do whatever needs to be done. Fauquier is in charge of making sure the organization has the funds necessary to fulfill its purpose. Basically, we, we talk, call on businesses. I own, I own a business, so we help contribute money. And what we do is we get businesses to sponsor a meal for the weekend. We ask them to put up money. That basically go, goes towards buying the food and the, and, and the soft drinks and stuff for the kids. Although feeding the team is the organization's main priority, the committee also raises money and helps fulfill other needs of the program. Last summer, another local university began renovating their facility. Their head coach offered Seth Thibodeau its old bleachers, but unless the colonels acted quickly, the seats would be demolished. The coaches committee sprang into action and supplied the transportation and manpower necessary to complete the job. The opportunity to play a part in enhancing the DDA field experience drives Thompson and Fakier. I played college baseball and nobody ever did anything like this for us when I played, you know, feed us after a game. And I decided after my two sons played here 
that I wanted to stay here and continue to make college baseball a experience that these kids would never forget because most of my good memories is from playing college baseball. So by giving these kids a meal after every game and they tell you thank you, the joy on their face, that's all the thrills. That's all the reward that I want. Doing things for the program to enhance the program, obviously uh, getting involved with some of the guys that I either knew back in the 70s and 80s, watching these kids um, mature as ball players, but more importantly, uh, hoping that we give them just a little bit guidance and a little uh, love that uh, they'll become just fine young men. And uh, to me, that's probably as important an aspect of this coaches committee as anything, because not very few of these kids are going to continue playing baseball after their career here at Nichols. You know, it's a very small minority of kids that go on and play in the pros. So if we can do things to make their last few years of baseball pleasant and uh, give their give their parents the the peace of mind that their kids are not only being well take, taken care of here at the university, but, but also being well fed. We, we take a lot of pride in that. Passman and Company plan on taking their show on the road with fellow committee member Darren Busby's trailer. We're traveling in about two weeks. We're going to Central Arkansas. We're bringing our cooking trailer, as you see what we have over there, and a group of us, uh, <clears throat> Mitch and Buzz and myself and several other guys are going up there for the weekend, and we're going to cook for them that weekend up in Arkansas. The Coaches Committee continues to do everything it can for the betterment of Nichols baseball. Next up on the list, the committee will assist on renovations to the dugouts. For the Set Thibodeau Show, I'm Philip Boudreaux. Thank you, Philip. Up next, Ashley Bull brings you the Colonel Connection with highlights from around Nichols Athletics. The Set Thibodeau Show, presented by State Farm Insurance, continues in just one minute. There goes Dwayne's car. Goes Dwayne's house. And there goes Dwayne. Man, that thing does not like Dwayne. State Farm's got you covered. In Thibodeau, call Mike Bednards. And in Homa, call Mark Anderpont. Get to a better state. The Nichols softball team divided a series with a top competitor. The volleyball team shared their skills with the community, while the women's soccer team matched up against an unorthodox opponent in this week's Colonel Connection. The softball team hosted UL Monroe last Wednesday. After trailing 7-0, the club mounted a seventh inning comeback but fell 7-4. The Colonels then took on first place Texas State in Thibodeau, falling 3-0 on Saturday before picking up their biggest victory of the season in a 1-0 triumph on Sunday. Ashton Bennett had the only RBI while also pitching the shutout against the Bobcats. Um, I thought it was a good series. That we played really hard. Uh, the first game was kind of a tough loss. I felt like we should have won it. I felt like I struggled a little bit during the game. I was having a little bit of problems, and then um, I'm really excited about the second game because we did win. It was it was a really good win to beat the number two team in our conference. It gives it's a real confidence booster. Since the series at Stephen F. Austin, Coach Angel Santiago continues to see improvement. The one thing that I'm loving about this team right now, their little um, details, attention to details, have been making a big difference for us. And from the pitchers taking care of their good 0-2 counts and um, getting ahead of batters, um, uh, hitters coming up for us on our offensive side, doing a good job of, of setting up innings. I'm really, I'm really proud of uh, the kids just taking care of ownership of their own games and learning and at least showing more than anything. Like given the, the, the hard effort where they're, I can see it, that they're taking care of their, their, um, their talent. The volleyball team held a spring clinic last weekend at the Thibodeau Recreational Center to help young girls further develop their game skills in serving, setting, and passing. Junior Catherine Stock sees the clinic as an opportunity for growing players to experience the ins and outs of the game. They're fun little girls. I mean, they all have, you know, their own little personality. 
and they all have spirit. So, um, of course, they're little, so sometimes it's hard to keep their attention. You gotta learn different ways to get their attention, but they want to learn. And um, you know, there's a real growth for volleyball in the community lately. So it's really fun because when I grew up here, um, there wasn't that many people playing volleyball outside of school, and so now there's a great uh, you know, league like this that helps foster the skills when they're young. The women's soccer team continues to stay busy in the off season, recently challenging the Nichols faculty and staff to a grudge match. The Colonels survived despite being sorely outnumbered, winning by a one nothing final. For the Seth Thibodeau Show, I'm Ashley Bull with your Colonel Connection. Who was that at the end there trying to chase down Missy McGuire? It sort of looked like I'm not you, coach. sure about who that good-looking athlete was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad neither one of us walked away with an injury. I know it. I think I'm still sore, though. <laughs> uh, welcome back. Seth Thibodeau show here. Mike Wagon. I'm alongside head coach Seth Thibodeau. Colonel's hitting the road this weekend to take on UT Arlington. It'll be a Thursday, Friday, Saturday set with uh, Easter coming up on Sunday. Guys must be raring to go right now. They are. This is always a really fun trip for us, too, to be able to stay there next to Six Flags in a neat area. Just a really nice road trip for us. But our guys are really motivated to have a really good weekend. We, we talked a little bit on Monday night about some goals we need to finish this season with. You know, just past the halfway mark in the season, there's some things we haven't accomplished yet that we really want really badly. And so we're getting there, but we're excited about this trip. What specifically are you still looking to accomplish? We want to be really good on Sundays. And we talked about that all fall. And I say Sundays, we want to be good on day three. We want to be dominant when everyone else is tired and it's been a long week and, and it's, you know, it's a rough day and it's hot. And that's what we, we feel like we're supposed to strive in and, and we haven't gotten there yet, but we'll be there down the stretch. I'm very confident in that. You're right in the middle of the pack, but the South and Conference seems to be jumbled up right now. you got two top teams that have pulled away a little bit and then everybody else uh, within a game or two of each other right now. And that parity opens things up, but it also makes it difficult to pull off a sweep against a team like the Islanders. I think what you're looking for, two out of three every weekend will get the job done. If you can sweep even better, two out of three, though, you get that done consistently, you're going to be in good shape. You're going to put yourself in a great situation, and then certainly that's the goal every every weekend. And uh, with 21 conference games left, I feel like we can make a nice run at this thing, and, and we just got to stay consistent and continue to pitch. you got to feel good about our pitching staff, the way we've played defense, the plays we've made. You know, when we, we continue when we start to get a little better and be consistent with the entire package, we have a, we have a really nice club and a chance to do some really some, make some damage in this in this league. Got about a minute left in the show. We want to mention uh, coming up here on Sunday, April 22nd, the Colonels will play host to uh, Lamar. That'll be our military appreciation game. It begins at one o'clock at Didier Field. And I know this is a, a project close to your heart. It, it is, and it's something that I really want want to uh, see you know be successful. We're gonna wear camouflage hats and camouflage jerseys. We're, we're going to have some military guys out here and, and, and just really do it up as best we can. Also, also during the game, we'll have a silent auction on the jerseys. And uh, to my knowledge, I don't know that Nichols has ever had a, had a camouflage jersey in any sport. Uh, so I'm excited for, for our fans to be able to see that. And, and it's, it's good for our players to be involved in things like this. And, and it's just going to make for an exciting day. Looking forward to it, Coach. Again, that's Sunday, April 22nd, Military Appreciation Day at Didier Field. That's going to do it for our show. For Coach Thibodeau, Ashley Bull, and Philip Boudreau, I'm Mike Wagenheim. We'll talk to you next week. The Seth Thibodeau Show has been brought to you by State Farm Insurance. Contact your local State Farm agent today and get to a better state with State Farm Insurance. This has been a presentation of the Colonel Sports Network.